And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Dice Masters is one of my favorite games, and I've had four sets up to this point. I have the uh, Avengers vs. X-Men, the Uncanny X-Men, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, Dungeons and & Dragons, and those are very fun. Uh, probably the one I would gravitate towards the most is the Marvel ones, because I love Marvel superheroes. And even though I like Marvel better than DC, I was really excited because now I can field Superman vs. Uh, Professor X and take Spider-Man against Batman or have them on the same team. Spider-Man and Batman up against Sinestro and Lex Luthor, the, the Joker, and Apocalypse. You know, that's just really cool to me. And I'm very excited about that. Now, I'm going to assume, uh, if you're watching this, that you already know how to play Dice Masters. If not, you can go back and watch my Avengers vs. X-Men or my Dungeons & Dragons Dice Masters. I explain how to play the game. Here, I'm looking at it just to see what's in this set and how it adds to the game as it is. You can buy a basic box of the DC Dice Masters that comes with three characters, uh, uh, three different versions of eight characters, so 24 characters, and you get some of the big names in that set. You get Batman and Superman and things like that, and they're all the different characters, especially the ones that are on TV right now, are in this set. I don't know as much about the DC Universe, so some of the characters here, I'm like, hmm, I think that guy's a villain, you know, well, because he has a villain thing on his card. I don't know as much about them as, let's say, I really know the uh, Marvel Universe well, but still, let's take a look at this set and see what it adds to the game. The first thing I want to do is look at the different dice in this game. As with all the Dice Master sets, there are some exceptional dice and there's some okay dice. I'm still not a big fan of the clear dice, although some of the clear dice in this one come across better. Um, Sinestro's dice are clear and so are Constantine's, although you can see Constantine's are a little harder to see. It's actually easier to see on the video screen here than it is uh, in real life. But some of the dice I think they did really well. I mean, the Batman die is pretty obvious and I, I think that they really nailed the colors of the Superman die here. You can see. Another one I think they really nailed the colors of are the Joker die. You can see the, the purple and the green and that's just a really good combo. And then there's just some dice of some of the minor characters that look sharp. Um, you're going to probably mix up the Green Lantern and the Green Lantern's ring. Uh, but, I mean, one has the numbers on, so that's obviously the Green Lantern. But there's different, you know, these are just the different dice involved in the game. And they're brightly colored, look good, very superhero-ish. Now I'm not going to show every card. I don't think I even, I know I, don't, I know I don't have every card. But I'm going to show you, I think, every character at least. And look at some of the things. This game has some of the blank characters in it. Here with Katana and Red Tornado and Vixen, you know, there's some basic characters if you want something cheap that does some attack, you can get them out there. The game also comes with some keywords, like Deathstroke, for example, here has Regenerate, uh, which when he's knocked out, there's, you can re-roll him, there's a chance to get him back in. Or Overcrush from Martian Manhunter, who when he attacks someone, if they block him, the, the, the damage that it takes to kill that person or knock that person out, the damage over that still applies to the other player. Interestingly enough, these keywords are very rarely mentioned in this set, unlike this keyword here, uh, retaliation, which is a new thing from this set, where when something happens, you can retaliate. So here, if an affiliated character is KO'd, you deal one damage to an opposing player. Um, Green Lantern has the same thing. Um, if an affiliated character is KO'd, deal one damage to an opposing player. Same thing with Batman, although they have other special abilities too. Um, so retaliation is, a, is an interesting uh, mix here because when these guys are out there, there's a chance that they will do damage back when they're attacked. But there's also some cool things like, you know, they have other abilities like Cyborg here. When he attacks by himself, he's a plus two, plus two. Uh, there's even retaliation specifically on villains here. You this one, if one of your villains is KO'd deal one damage to your opponent for each of your active villains. So this is a much more powerful retaliation. And this set does a lot with the villains in Justice League. There's a lot of stuff for villains, which would actually make these cards very fun to mix with the Marvel set since there's so many villains in that set too. 
But like when Sinestro, this is one of my favorite cards, when he's active, all your other villains cost one less to field. Um, Shazam here, he's like opposed to villains. When he's active, whenever you field a non-villain character, that person goes up one. Katana here is plus one attack for each villain die in the field. This guy gets plus one attack and plus one defense for each other active villain. Then there's Blue Beetle. Yeah, I don't know. Does anyone like Blue Beetle in the comics? There's certainly, he's the character I got the most of when I was opening packs. I felt like he's like that common nobody wants. Uh, but whenever a villain's fielded, he does one damage to an opposing player. That's actually a pretty cool ability if you're playing against a villain deck. While Booster Gold, the other loser in the Justice League, can't attack if a villain is active. Then we have Darkseid. Now Darkseid was a lot cheaper than I thought he would be. I thought he'd be like a cost 7 or 8. But he's not always very expensive here, but he is powerful when he's active. Whenever you KO an opposing non-sidekick, non-villain character, you do one damage. So if he kills a non-sidekick character that's a hero, basically, he does an extra damage. This card from Zatanna I thought was very interesting just because it's backwards magic and the backwards magic was written backwards. But here, when she's active, you can re-roll your sidekick dice once. And in this set, there's a lot of cards that have to do with sidekicks. Stargirl makes all your sidekicks here, plus one attack, plus one defense. Here, if you have two more justice characters in play, your sidekicks take no damage from attacking or blocking characters. Sidekicks can't block the Swamp Thing, probably because they don't want to. And when Black Canaries field it, no sidekicks can block this turn. When Cheetah is attacks, you KO an opposing sidekick. When Red Tornado is active once per turn, if you draw three or more sidekicks, you can put all the sidekicks in your use pile and draw four new dice. This is a really fun special ability because sometimes you draw all those sidekicks in the late game of Dice Masters and you're like, come on, are you kidding me? Red Tornado lets you redraw them. Superman here. Uh, when you field him, you can pay two to purchase a different character with the Justice League affiliation and put the die directly in your bag. Superman is definitely the leader of the Justice League and this card, really helpful. And there's other Justice League cards here. Wonder Woman, when she's active all, other characters with the Justice League cost one less. Aquaman's the same thing. Poor old Aquaman, but in this game, you're gonna want him on your, on your team. Here, uh, Darkseid shows up again. He gets plus four attack and defense when blocking or blocked by characters with the Justice League affiliation. There's also equipment in this game. We have the Lantern Power Ring, which here, uh, for each character that you have in excess of your opponent, you get an extra die each turn, which is a really powerful, cool ability if you put it in the right thing, where you get a lot of cheap characters out, the Lantern Power Ring becomes good. But I think better than that, I like the Batarang here. This one here can just KO characters, uh, but this Batarang here is kind of like, um, uh, chain Lightning, in a sense, does one damage to a villain, then two damage to another villain, and you keep going, three damage to the next villain, four damage to the next villain. Now, this doesn't always work out as marvelous as you want, but if your opponent has a lot of villains, the Batarang can be pretty cool. Uh, then just some other cool cards. Green Lantern here, when he attacks, other cards get plus two, plus two. I like that Solomon Grundy's in the set, and his cards are uh, born on Saturday, I'm sorry, born on Monday, died on Saturday, came back Sunday, or something like that. Uh, the Flash here, He's unblockable if your opponent has less than three characters. Uh, then we have the Green Arrow, who when he's fielded does two damage to each of two target characters. You know, that whole Green Arrow type thing. Or when you're, he's fielded, spin an opposing character down a level. Vixen here has uh, a cool ability where you can spend one die to prevent all damage to her from someone else, making her a great blocker. Harley Quinn is in the game. Of course, she's affiliated with the Joker. When she's active, the Joker costs two less to buy and one less to field. But she's not always with the Joker. For example, here, when she attacks, you basically have to block everyone else before you can block her. Hawkeye can't be blocked by strength or shield characters, uh, showing his flight ability. That's a cool way to add that in here. When Vibe is taken out, everyone takes one damage, which is very devastating to, let's say, a sidekick heavy uh, group. When Firestorm attacks, you do one damage to a target character or player. And then, hey, it's Catwoman. When field it, you get an extra die. So that's pretty cool. But even, I like her super rare here. When field it, she can name a character Kai die. You then draw a die from your opponent's bag. And if it's the die that you said, you can field it this turn and draw an attack with it. And then they get it back. So basically, you can take a wild guess 
hopefully pull that die and you can attack with it. So you might as well call one of the big characters that they have. Very fun. Superman, as I mentioned, is in the game. Uh, there's lots of, the, he comes in the basic set. Uh, so there, I think there's four different Supermans. Here he can't be damaged during the attack uh, step. Here he can't be targeted by opposing action dice or abilities, which is way more powerful than you might think. Deathstroke here, if he is KO'd during attacking or blocking, he comes back on at level one. Dead man, when fielded, choose a character. That character can't attack or block. So you can basically take someone else out. Zatanna here. She is one of the nicer dice in the game. I like the purple and white. Uh, but when fielded, you get an extra die, which is a pretty cool thing. The Atom, uh, I think he's the Ant-Man of the DC Universe. Anyhow, he doesn't take damage from people who are a higher level than him. Brainiac. Oh, I like Brainiac. He's a great Superman villain. When he's active, your opponent attacks with one character. You can force another character to attack. So if your opponent has... I like Brainiac because if your opponent has someone that they're using, you know, just, just for defense, or someone who they're just having sitting out there because their ability is going to annoy you, he's a great one to make that person attack. And Constantine here, when he's active... Uh, you can t make your opponent re-roll an action die. You'll notice there's a lot of cards that will annoy your opponent. None more so maybe than some of the Joker cards. Here you can pick someone's character. They can't feel that character while the Joker's active. You're like, oh, you got Superman? Well, he's not coming out. That's a really powerful ability. And here's another annoying Brainiac. Uh, you can make your opponent put one die from their draw back in the bag and redraw. Crazily annoying. Captain Cold. Your opponent has to pay one to declare an attack. That means that they have to do an extra one every time they want to attack. Very neat. Here, Lex Luthor. Your opponent has to pay two to use basic action dice. Here, Constantine. You can name a character before you draw. If you draw and roll that character this turn, you can field it for free. This is one of my favorite cards. That's why I'm showing it to you last. Or another one I really like, Lex Luthor. When you use a basic action die, roll it. And if it's an action face, you get it back. So you can like use uh, basic action dice more than once. Or Batman, who can, when he's fielded, he can purchase a base action die for one. This shows off the his, his belt or his riches. So these are just some of the cards that are in the game. You can see that when I put them next to a Marvel card, so here's Batman and here's Angel, um, here's Colossus and, and Lex Luthor. You know, you can see here that you really can't tell any difference. Yeah, you can look really close and see that they are DC and Marvel, but for the most part, they really fit seamlessly together in how they look. Unlike, for example, the Dungeons & Dragons set and the um, Yu-Gi-Oh set have a different look to them, these look very similar. Now, even though I like the Marvel Universe better than the DC Universe, this really does add something to the game. It adds uh, just... Some, I like the addition of the keywords, okay? And I like to see those keywords continue, and I bet they will. I bet we'll see these keywords cross over into the uh, Marvel Universe. Each set might, I think they're gonna, as sets go by, we're gonna start seeing focuses on a theme. This one had a lot to do with your opponent. There was a lot of reaction, like a retaliation stuff. There are things you have to pay to attack. You have to pay to uh, extra to do this. You can't play basic action dice. Things like that, and I'm really enjoying that because it brings out the interaction more than just the attacking. I don't see any kind of power creep, although I'm sure someone has figured out some ultimate combo by now, but I don't, I'm not good enough at the game to, to figure that thing, that stuff out. But I, but I am saying like, I, I feel like these characters are right in line. It's not like, oh, DC, I'm only gonna use those as opposed to Marvel. This reminds me back when I was a uh, uh, younger and I played Overpower, a uh, uh, collectible card game, and the DC came out and was severely underpowered compared to the Marvel one. And then they came out with the image one, which was overpowered here. I can mix and match everything and it feels fine. It feels like Superman can take on Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister and that's just kind of cool. Now, some people don't like the cross genres. I think it's amazing, but I like these dice a lot. I think this is a solid game. If you don't play the Marvel one or anything else, this is a good place to start off. You could play just a DC set and have a lot of fun. And the basic action cards that come with the DC set are also good. Casualties, for example, is a way to take out a sidekick or save civilians here. Whenever you feel the sidekick, you reduce the fielding cost of another die by one. So this kind of encourages you to get sidekicks and then people who will help them. Here's one I like very much. The target character gets plus three attack and overcrush. This is one I think a lot of people will be using, especially when they have bigger characters in the deck. Or just do damage to another player. This is a fireball 
uh, sort of, of the Dice Masters deck. Or the Phantom Zone, where you can basically send someone off the table for a while, which is a lot of fun. Pick your battle. They can only be blocked by opposing characters of the same energy type. And sidekicks can only be blocked by sidekicks. This is a very interesting card, and you, you would have to kind of build a deck around it. Here, your attacking characters take a maximum of two damage from each blocker. Take out all the level one characters. Thanks a lot, Superman. This is one of the most expensive basic action dice, but it's very fun to do. And then if you, you know, KO all level one characters and do three damage to an opposing player, uh, choose a non-villain character. All other non-villains cannot block this turn. So you basically, you're taking out one person or you're all, you know, you have Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman out. Guess what? Only Wonder Woman can defend this turn. Or choose an opposing character. If you damage that character this turn, you KO it. Draw a die from your bag and put your prep area. So they have a very powerful character like Superman or something like that. Take them out. And of course you can mix and match this stuff from other sets. I like to use the Resurrection one from the Dungeons and Dragons basic card with the DC characters because hey, Superman's back again. So anyhow, I think you'll love this. Like I said, at this point in time, I am loving the Dice Master series. I am just so enthusiastic now to mix the DC and Marvel stuff together. It just plays really well. Very pumped to see what's coming out next, but if they stopped producing Dice Masters forever, if this was the last set, there would be so much already, and I'd be happily be able to play it for the rest of my life. Dice Masters is a great game. This expansion makes it better. Dice Tower Judgment, into my collection, of course. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.